The day started like any other. I left the office a few minutes after five, whistling a cheerful tune as I drove home. My wife Emily had always been the love of my life. We married right after college, and though the years had brought their share of challenges, our bond seemed unbreakable. Or so I thought. When I walked into the kitchen, Emily was sitting at the table, a glass of red wine in her hand. There was a bottle of my favorite whiskey, monkey shoulder, and a glass set out for me. I smiled, thinking she had planned a nice evening for us. Little did I know, my world was about to be turned upside down. Hey, honey, I said, setting down my briefcase and pouring myself a drink. What's the occasion? Emily looked up at me with an unsettlingly calm expression. David, we need to talk, she said, her voice steady but distant. I felt a knot form in my stomach. What's going on? I asked, trying to keep my tongue light. She took a sip of her wine, then set the glass down carefully. Do you think I've been a good wife? She asked, her eyes fixed on mine. I frowned, unsure where this was heading. Of course you have. You've been amazing. Why would you ask that? She sighed, looking down at the table. I've been thinking a lot lately, and I've come to a decision. I need to experience more. I want to date other men. Her words hit me like a sledgehammer. I sat there, staring at her, unable to process what she had just said. You? Want to what? Emily nodded, her expression unwavering. I'm not asking for a divorce. I still love you, David. But I need to explore. I need to know what else is out there before it's too late. My mind was reeling. Emily, we've been together for over 20 years. We have a life, a family. Why now? She reached across the table and took my hand. Because I'm getting older, and I don't want to have regrets. I've given you everything, been faithful for so long. I just need this, David. I need it for me. I pulled my hand back, feeling a mix of anger and desperation. And what about us? What about our marriage? You think I can just sit here and wait while you? Experiment. Tears welled up in her eyes, but she didn't falter. I don't expect it to be easy, but I hope you can understand. This isn't about you. It's about me. I stood up abruptly, my chair scraping against the floor. I can't believe what I'm hearing. You want to go out and date other men while I sit here like a fool. How do you expect me to accept this? Emily stood too, her voice rising slightly. I don't want to hurt you, but I can't ignore this feeling. I need to do this, David. I need to. The room seemed to spin around me. I grabbed my whiskey and downed it in one gulp, the burn in my throat matching the fire in my chest. This is insane, Emily. Absolutely insane. She looked at me with a mix of sorrow and determination. I know it's hard to understand, but I'm asking you to trust me. Trust that I'll come back to you. I shook my head, backing away. I can't. I just can't. Emily's face crumpled, and she turned away, heading upstairs to change. I watched her go, feeling a mixture of heartbreak and disbelief. How could everything change so suddenly? How could the woman I loved more than anything decide to throw her life away for the sake of experiences? I stood there for what felt like hours, staring at the spot where she had been. The sound of a car horn outside snapped me out of my daze. I looked out the window to see a sleek black car waiting at the curb. Emily came downstairs, looking stunning in a little black dress that clung to her curves. She glanced at me, her eyes pleading for understanding. I'll be back later, she said softly. I didn't respond. I couldn't. I just watched as she walked out the door, leaving me alone with a shattered heart and a mind full of unanswered questions. As the car drove away, I sank into a chair, my head in my hands. My life had just been turned upside down, and I had no idea how to pick up the pieces. Sitting alone in the kitchen, I stared at the empty whiskey glass in front of me. The shock of Emily's revelation was still sinking in. How did we get here? I thought back to the beginning, trying to piece together the events that led us to this moment. Emily and I met in college. She was the lively, captivating girl everyone wanted to know, and I was just an ordinary guy who somehow managed to catch her eye. Our relationship blossomed quickly, filled with late-night conversations, spontaneous adventures, and a deep, genuine connection. By graduation, we were inseparable, and soon after, we were married. Those early years were filled with joy and excitement. We traveled, explored new places, and built a life together. Emily was my rock, my confidant, and my best friend. We talked about everything, from our dreams and ambitions to our fears and insecurities. We were a team, facing the world together. As time went on, we settled into a comfortable routine. 
We bought a house, had two beautiful children, and focused on our careers. Life was busy, but we always made time for each other. Date nights, weekend getaways, and quiet evenings at home kept our bond strong. I thought we were happy. I thought she was happy. But looking back now, I realized there were signs I had missed. Emily had always been the center of attention, drawing people to her effortlessly. She thrived on the admiration and validation she received from others. I saw it as part of her charm, never imagining it could become a source of discontent. A few years ago, I noticed a change in her. She seemed restless, often lost in thought. She started going out more with friends, spending less time at home. I brushed it off, assuming it was just a phase, something she needed to work through on her own. I never imagined it was a precursor to the bombshell she dropped on me tonight. As I sat there, memories flooded back, each one a reminder of what we had built together. Our wedding day, the birth of our children, the countless moments of laughter and love. I had given my all to this marriage, and now it felt like it was slipping through my fingers. The sound of Emily's voice echoed in my mind. I need to experience more. I want to date other men. How could she say that? How could she throw away everything we had for a fleeting thrill? I couldn't wrap my head around it. I stood up and walked through the house, each room a testament to our life together. The living room where we watched movies with the kids, the dining room where we shared family meals, the bedroom where we whispered our dreams to each other at night. It all felt so fragile now, like it could crumble at any moment. In our bedroom, I found a photo album on the nightstand. I opened it, flipping through the pages filled with pictures of our life together. There we were, young and full of hope our future stretching out before us like a golden road. Each photo told a story, a chapter in our journey. I stopped at a picture of us on our honeymoon. We were standing on a beach, the sun setting behind us, our arms wrapped around each other. The smiles on our faces were genuine, reflecting the love and excitement we felt. I traced my fingers over the image, wondering where that couple had gone. Had I failed her in some way? Had I missed the signs that she needed more than I could give? Guilt and confusion swirled within me, each thought more painful than the last. I had always believed in our love, in the strength of our commitment. Now, I wasn't so sure. I sank onto the bed, the weight of the evening pressing down on me. Emily's words kept replaying in my mind, each repetition a fresh stab of pain. I needed to talk to someone to make sense of this mess. But who could I turn to? Our friends would never understand, and I couldn't burden our children with this. As I lay there, staring at the ceiling, I realized that my life had been irrevocably changed. The future was uncertain, and the path ahead was unclear. But one thing was certain. I couldn't go on pretending everything was fine. I had to confront this head-on for my sake and for the sake of our family. With a heavy heart, I resolved to find a way forward. Emily and I needed to have a serious conversation about our marriage, about what we wanted and where we were headed. I wasn't ready to give up on us, not yet. But I couldn't ignore the reality of the situation. We were at a crossroads, and the choices we made now would shape the rest of our lives. As the first light of dawn filtered through the curtains, I finally closed my eyes, exhaustion taking over. Tomorrow would bring new challenges, new questions, and hopefully some answers. But for now, I needed rest. The journey ahead was going to be long and difficult, but I was determined to face it with strength and clarity. The next morning, I woke up with a heavy heart and an even heavier head. Emily was already downstairs her usual cheerful humming absent. I took a deep breath, steeling myself for the conversation we needed to have. As I descended the stairs, the smell of freshly brewed coffee filled the air, a stark contrast to the tension that lingered between us. Emily was seated at the kitchen table, sipping her coffee. She glanced up as I entered the room, her eyes reflecting a mixture of guilt and determination. Morning, she said softly. I poured myself a cup of coffee and sat across from her. We need to talk, I said, my voice steady but firm. She nodded, setting her cup down. I know. For a moment, we sat in silence, the weight of unspoken words hanging heavily between us. Finally, I broke the silence. Emily, I need to understand why. Why now? Why do you feel the need to explore other relationships after all these years? She sighed, her shoulders slumping slightly. David, I love you. I always have. But lately, I felt this. Restlessness. This need to experience more before it's too late. It's not about you. It's about me and what I feel like I'm missing. I shook my head, frustration bubbling up. And what about us? Our family. Do you expect me to just sit by and watch while you date other men? Tears welled up in her eyes. 
I don't expect it to be easy, but I hope you would understand that you could give me this time to figure things out. Figure things out? I echoed incredulous. Emily, you're talking about our marriage, our life together. How can you expect me to be okay with this? Her expression hardened slightly. I need this, David. I've given you everything for over twenty years. I need to do this for myself. I stood up abruptly, the chair scraping against the floor. This is insane, Emily. You can't just decide to change the rules of our marriage because you feel restless. She stood too, her voice rising. I have to do this. I'm suffocating here, David. I need to know what else is out there before it's too late. I felt my control slipping, anger and hurt mixing into a volatile cocktail. So what? You want an open marriage now. You want to go out and have fun while I wait at home like a fool. She took a step back, her eyes wide with shock. I never said I wanted an open marriage. I just need some time to figure things out. Time? How much time, Emily? Weeks? Months? Years? My voice was shaking now, the reality of the situation crashing down on me. Emily looked down, tears streaming down her face. I don't know, she whispered. I couldn't take it anymore. I can't do this, I said, my voice breaking. I can't live like this, wondering when you'll come home, who you'll be with. It's too much. She looked up at me, desperation in her eyes. Please, David. Just try to understand. I can't, I said firmly. I won't. She took a step toward me, but I backed away. What are you saying? She asked, her voice trembling. I'm saying this is over, Emily. If you can't commit to our marriage, then there's nothing left for us. She stared at me, stunned. You can't mean that. I do, I said, my resolve hardening. I love you, but I can't share you. If you want to explore other relationships, then you do it without me. The silence that followed was deafening. Emily's face crumpled, and she turned away, heading upstairs without another word. I watched her go, a mix of sorrow and relief washing over me. The next few days were a blur. We avoided each other, the tension in the house palpable. I threw myself into work, trying to distract myself from the pain. But every quiet moment was filled with thoughts of Emily and the life we had built together. One evening, I came home to find Emily packing a suitcase. She looked up as I entered the room, her eyes red from crying. I'm going to stay with my sister for a while, she said quietly. I nodded, unable to find the words. As much as it hurt, I knew this was the only way forward. We needed space, time to figure out what we wanted. As she left, I felt a strange mixture of sadness and relief. The house was quiet, almost peaceful, but the emptiness was overwhelming. I sat down on the couch, staring at the spot where Emily had been. Our marriage was at a breaking point, and I had no idea what the future held. But one thing was clear. I couldn't go on living in limbo. It was time to make some difficult decisions, to face the reality of our situation. I loved Emily, but I couldn't accept a life of uncertainty and betrayal. It was time to find a new path, even if it meant letting go of the past. As the days turned into weeks, I began to adjust to my new reality. Emily and I spoke occasionally, trying to navigate the complexities of our separation. It wasn't easy, but it was necessary. For both of us. The future was uncertain, but I knew one thing for sure. I had to take control of my own happiness. And that meant making some hard choices. No matter how painful they might be, the days following Emily's departure were a strange mix of freedom and loneliness. I missed her terribly, but at the same time, I felt a weight had been lifted off my shoulders. The house was quieter, and the routine we built over twenty years was disrupted, leaving me with more time to think and reflect. One evening, as I was scrolling through my phone, a notification popped up from an old friend, Mark. We had lost touch over the years, but his message was simple. Let's catch up. Drinks this Friday. I hesitated for a moment before replying. Sure, see you at Joe's bar at seven. Friday came, and I found myself walking into Joe's bar, a place filled with memories of happier times. Mark was already there, a grin spreading across his face as he saw me. David? Long time, man, he said, clapping me on the back. Yeah, it's been too long, I replied, taking a seat next to him. We ordered drinks and soon fell into an easy conversation reminiscing about the old days and catching up on each other's lives. As the night wore on, the conversation took a more serious turn. So, how are things with Emily? Mark asked, his tone cautious. I sighed, taking a long sip of my whiskey. It's complicated. We're separated right now. She wants to explore other relationships. Mark's eyebrows shot up. Wow. 
that's rough. How are you holding up? I shrugged, feeling a mix of emotions. Honestly, I don't know. Some days are better than others. But I'm trying to figure things out. Mark nodded thoughtfully. You know, maybe this is a chance for you to rediscover yourself. Do things you've always wanted to do, but never had the time for. His words struck a chord. I'd spent so many years focusing on my marriage and family that I'd forgotten about my own dreams and interests. Maybe he was right. Maybe this was an opportunity to find myself again. Over the next few weeks, I started making small changes. I joined a gym, something I'd always wanted to do but never found the time for. I picked up my guitar, an old passion of mine, and started playing again. The music was therapeutic, a way to express my feelings and escape the turmoil of my thoughts. One evening, after a particularly good workout at the gym, I decided to treat myself to a night out. There was a new bar downtown that I'd heard good things about, so I dressed up and headed out. The bar was lively, filled with people laughing and chatting. I found a seat at the bar and ordered a drink, enjoying the atmosphere. As I sipped my drink, I noticed a woman sitting a few seats down. Glancing my way, she had a warm smile and kind eyes, and for the first time in a long while, I felt a spark of interest. Gathering my courage, I moved to the seat next to her. Hi, I'm David, I said, offering my hand. She smiled, shaking my hand. Nice to meet you, David. I'm Lily. We started talking, and I found myself opening up to her in a way I hadn't done in years. She was easy to talk to, and we shared stories about our lives, our passions, and our struggles. There was a connection between us, something genuine and refreshing. As the night went on, I felt a sense of excitement and possibility that I hadn't felt in a long time. Maybe there was hope for me after all, a chance to rebuild my life and find happiness again. Over the next few weeks, Lily and I continued to see each other. Our relationship was new and exciting, and it helped me rediscover parts of myself that I had long forgotten. I started to feel more confident, more in control of my life. I was no longer defined by my marriage or my past. I was carving out a new future for myself. One evening, as we sat together on my couch, Lily turned to me with a serious expression. David, I need to ask you something. Are you truly ready to move on? I mean, with everything that's happened with Emily, I need to know if you're ready for something new. I took her hand, looking into her eyes. Lily, meeting you has been one of the best things that's happened to me in a long time. I won't lie, what happened with Emily still hurts, but I'm ready to move forward. I want to see where this goes. She smiled, her eyes filled with warmth. I'm glad to hear that. I feel the same way. In that moment, I realized that I was finally starting to heal. The pain of the past was still there, but it was no longer defining me. I was rediscovering my self-worth, finding new joys and new beginnings. As the weeks turned into months, my life continued to improve. I reconnected with old friends, pursued new hobbies, and built a deeper relationship with Lily. Emily and I remained in contact, primarily for the sake of our children, but the dynamic between us had shifted. I no longer felt the same sense of loss and desperation. I had found a new path, one that was filled with hope and possibility. The journey was far from over, but for the first time in a long time, I felt optimistic about the future. I had faced the breaking point and come out stronger ready to embrace whatever came next. The initial euphoria of my newfound independence began to settle into a steady rhythm. Life was looking up. Lily and I grew closer, and I was making progress at work and in my personal endeavors. However, the shadow of my past lingered, especially when it came to Emily. One Saturday afternoon, I received an unexpected call from Emily. David, can we meet? I need to talk to you, she said, her voice shaky. Curiosity and caution warred within me. Sure. How about the cafe on Maple Street at 3 p.m.? When I arrived, Emily was already there, nursing a cup of coffee. She looked tired, the sparkle at once to find her noticeably dimmed. I sat down opposite her, unsure of what to expect. David, I've been doing a lot of thinking, she began, her voice wavering. I realize now that I made a huge mistake. I felt a mix of emotions, anger, pity, and a twinge of the old love we once shared. What do you mean, Emily? She took a deep breath, tears welling up in her eyes. This whole exploring other relationships thing. It was a disaster. I thought I needed more, but what I really needed was right in front of me all along. I miss us, David. I miss you. Her words hit me like a punch to the gut. For a moment, I was transported back to the good times we shared. But the pain of her betrayal was still fresh. Emily, you can't just undo the damage. 
You left because you wanted something else. How could I trust that you won't change your mind again? She reached across the table, her hand trembling. I know I've hurt you, and I can't take that back. But I've realized that my happiness lies with you. I was selfish and foolish. I want to make things right. If you let me. I pulled my hand away, my mind racing. Emily, I don't know. It's not that simple. You shattered my trust, and it took everything I had to start rebuilding my life. I don't think I can go back. Her face crumpled, and she wiped away a tear. I understand. I just wanted you to know how sorry I am. If there's ever a chance, I'll be here, waiting. We sat in silence for a while, the weight of her words sinking in. I couldn't deny that part of me still cared for her, but I had come too far to risk falling back into the same old patterns. I needed to keep moving forward, for my own sake. After our meeting, I felt a sense of closure. Emily's regret was palpable, but it couldn't erase the past. I returned home to Lily, who greeted me with a warm smile and a comforting hug. How did it go? she asked gently. It was, intense. Emily regrets everything, but I told her I can't go back. I need to keep moving forward, I replied, holding her close. Lily kissed my forehead. I'm proud of you, David. You come a long way, and you deserve to be happy. As the days passed, Emily's attempts to reconnect became less frequent. She was clearly struggling, and while part of me sympathized, I knew that my future lay in a different direction. Lily and I continued to build our relationship, and I found solace in her unwavering support and understanding. One evening, as Lily and I were cooking dinner together, she turned to me with a serious expression. David, I need to ask you something important. Sure. What is it? Do you still have feelings for Emily? I know she was a big part of your life, and I need to know where we stand, she said, her eyes searching mine. I put down the knife I was using to chop vegetables and took her hands in mine. Lily, Emily will always be a part of my past, but my feelings for her have changed. What we had is over. I care about you, and I want to build a future with you. Relief washed over her face, and she smiled. That's all I needed to hear. We continued cooking, the atmosphere light and filled with hope. My life was moving forward, and for the first time in a long while, I felt at peace with my choices. Months went by, and my bond with Lily grew stronger. We took trips together, explored new hobbies, and made countless memories. Emily remained a part of my past, a reminder of the lessons I had learned and the strength I had gained. One day, I received a letter from Emily. In it, she expressed her gratitude for the years we had shared, and her deep regret for the pain she had caused. She wished me happiness and peace, and in her own way, she was letting go. Reading her words, I felt a sense of finality. It was time to fully embrace the present, and look forward to the future. Emily and I had shared a life, but that chapter had closed. Now, it was time to write new ones with the people who mattered most. Lily and I sat on the porch one evening, watching the sunset. She rested her head on my shoulder, and I wrapped my arm around her. Here's to new beginnings, I said softly. She looked up at me, her eyes shining with love, and to leaving the past where it belongs. As the sun dipped below the horizon, I felt a sense of contentment. The journey had been long and painful, but I had found my way, and with Lily by my side, the future looked brighter than ever. Life was beginning to feel normal again, or at least a new kind of normal. Emily and I were finding our footing as co-parents, keeping communication open for the sake of our children. Lily and I were building a strong relationship, and my confidence was growing day by day. One evening, my daughter Megan called and asked to meet for dinner. I suggested our favorite Italian place, and she agreed. I arrived early, nervously drumming my fingers on the table. Megan was a smart and intuitive young woman. She must have sensed the upheaval in my life. When she walked in, her smile was warm but tinged with worry. Hey, Dad, she said, hugging me tightly. Hi, sweetheart. It's good to see you, I replied, pulling out a chair for her. As we settled in and ordered, Megan got straight to the point. Dad, how are you really doing? I've been worried about you. I took a deep breath. I'm doing okay, Megan. It's been tough, but I'm fighting my way. How about you? How are you handling everything? She sighed, looking down at her hands. It's been hard. Seeing you and Mom go through this has been really tough. I know she made some bad choices, but I don't want to lose my family. Her honesty hit me hard. Megan, you're not losing your family. Your mom and I will always be here for you and your brother. Things are just different now. She nodded, tears welling up in her eyes. I know. It's just hard to accept sometimes. 
I reached across the table and took her hand. I understand, honey. But you have to know that both your mom and I love you very much. We're trying to find a new normal, and I hope you can find it too. Megan wiped her eyes and managed a small smile. Thanks, Dad. I just want you to be happy. I am happy, Megan. It's taken some time, but I'm getting there. And I have someone new in my life who's been really good for me, I said, hoping to ease her mind. She perked up a bit. Lily, right? Mom mentioned her. I nodded. Yes, Lily. She's been wonderful. I think you'd really like her. Megan smiled, genuinely this time. I'd like to meet her. As we finished dinner, I felt a weight lift from my shoulders. Megan's acceptance and understanding were crucial to my healing process. I knew the road ahead would still have bumps, but with the support of my family and Lily, I felt more equipped to handle whatever came our way. A few weeks later, I arranged for Megan to meet Lily. We decided on a casual brunch at a cozy cafe downtown. When we arrived, Megan and Lily hit it off immediately, chatting like old friends. Watching them interact filled me with a sense of hope and relief. Megan, it's so nice to finally meet you, Lily said warmly, giving her a hug. You too, Lily. Dad's told me so much about you, Megan replied, smiling. As they talked, I saw the pieces of my life coming together in a new and beautiful way. The acceptance from my daughter meant the world to me, and seeing her bond with Lily reassured me that I was on the right path. After brunch, Megan pulled me aside. Dad, I really like her. She seems like a great person. She is, Megan. She's helped me through a lot, I said, feeling grateful. Megan hugged me tightly. I'm happy for you, Dad. You deserve to be happy. Over the next few months, our family dynamic continued to evolve. Emily and I communicated civilly, focusing on co-parenting. There were still difficult moments, but overall, things were improving. Lily became more integrated into my life, and our relationship deepened. One evening, as Lily and I were preparing dinner together, I felt a sense of peace wash over me. You know, I never thought I'd find happiness again, I said, chopping vegetables beside her. Lily looked at me, her eyes filled with love. But you did, David. And so did I. We shared a tender kiss, and in that moment, I knew that despite all the pain and heartache, life had a way of bringing us exactly what we needed. As the weeks turned into months, the kids grew closer to Lily, and she became a cherished part of our family. Emily, though still grappling with her own regrets, respected my newfound happiness and did her best to support our children's adjustment. One day, Megan, her brother Ryan, Lily, and I decided to spend a day at the park. We laughed, played games, and enjoyed each other's company. As we sat on a picnic blanket, watching the sunset, Megan turned to me. Dad, I know things didn't go as planned with Mom, but I'm really glad you're happy now, she said, her eyes reflecting the golden hues of the setting sun. Me too, Megan. Me too, I replied, squeezing her hand. The journey had been long and filled with unexpected terms, but I had found my way. With the support and understanding of my family, and the love of a wonderful woman, I was ready to embrace the future with hope and gratitude. As the sun dipped below the horizon, I felt a sense of completeness. Life had thrown its challenges at me, but I had come out stronger surrounded by the people who mattered most. Together, we faced the uncertainties of the future ready to create new memories and cherish the bond that held us together. Life had settled into a comfortable routine, one that felt balanced and full of promise. With the past firmly behind me, I focused on the future and the new chapter I was building with Lily. Our relationship had grown stronger and it was clear we had something special. But there were still moments when the past crept in, casting shadows over our happiness. One sunny afternoon, Lily and I decided to take a trip to the countryside. We packed a picnic and drove out to a beautiful meadow we had discovered on one of our weekend drives. The place was serene, with wildflowers swaying gently in the breeze and birds singing overhead. It felt like the perfect escape from the complexities of everyday life. As we spread out the picnic blanket and unpacked the food, I noticed Lily was unusually quiet. I sat down next to her, gently taking her hand. Hey, everything okay? I asked, my concern of it. She looked at me, her eyes searching mine. David, I've been thinking a lot lately. About us, about the future. My heart skipped a beat. What about the future? Lily sighed, squeezing my hand. I love you, David. More than I ever thought possible. But I need to know if you're truly ready to move on from Emily. I need to know that you're committed to us. Her words hit me hard, but I understood where she was coming from. Lily, I am committed to you. 
Emily will always be a part of my past, but that's where she belongs. My future is with you. Tears welled up in her eyes as she smiled. I needed to hear that. I want us to build something beautiful together, without any shadows hanging over us. I pulled her into a tight embrace, kissing her forehead. We will, Lily. I promise. As we sat there, holding each other, I felt a sense of clarity. The past had shaped me, but it didn't define me. With Lily by my side, I was ready to embrace the future wholeheartedly. Our relationship continued to flourish, and we started making plans for the future. We talked about moving in together, about potential travel destinations, and even about the possibility of marriage. Each conversation brought us closer, strengthening our bond. One evening, as we sat on the couch watching a movie, Lily turned to me with a thoughtful expression. David, there's something I've been wanting to do with you. What's that? I asked, curious. Let's take a dance class together, she said, her eyes sparkling with excitement. I've always wanted to learn ballroom dancing, and I think it would be a fun way for us to connect even more. I chuckled, feeling a mix of excitement and nervousness. Dancing, huh? I've never been much of a dancer, but for you, I'll give it a try. Lily's face lit up with joy. Great. It'll be fun, I promise. The following week, we signed up for a ballroom dance class at a local studio. The first few lessons were awkward, filled with missteps and laughter, but gradually, we found our rhythm. Dancing with Lily was exhilarating, a beautiful metaphor for our relationship. Learning to move together, supporting each other, and finding joy in the process. One night, after a particularly good dance session, we walked back to the car hand in hand. The moonlight cast a soft glow on the street, and everything felt perfect. Lily stopped and turned to me, her eyes shining with love. David, this has been one of the best experiences of my life. I'm so happy we're doing this together, she said softly. I pulled her close, feeling the warmth of her body against mine. Me too, Lily. You brought so much joy to my life. We kissed under the moonlight, the world fading away around us. In that moment, I knew that we were meant to be together, that our love was strong enough to overcome any obstacle. As the months passed, we continued to dance, both literally and metaphorically. We faced challenges and celebrated victories, always supporting each other. Our love grew deeper and our future together became more certain. One day, while we were hiking in the mountains, I felt a surge of emotion. The beauty of the landscape mirrored the beauty of the life we were building together. I stopped and turned to Lily, my heart pounding. Lily, I know we've talked about the future a lot, but there's something I need to say. I began, my voice trembling slightly. She looked at me, her expression curious and loving. What is it, David? I took a deep breath, reaching into my pocket and pulling out a small velvet box. Lily, you have brought so much light into my life. You've helped me heal, grow, and rediscover happiness. I can't imagine my life without you. Will you marry me? Tears filled her eyes as she gasped, covering her mouth with her hands. Oh my God, David, yes, yes, I'll marry you. I slipped the ring onto her finger, feeling a wave of joy and relief wash over me. We kiss, sealing our promise to each other. In that moment, I knew that we were truly beginning a new chapter. One filled with love, hope, and endless possibilities. As we walked back down the mountain, hand in hand, I felt an overwhelming sense of gratitude. The journey had been long and filled with challenges, but it had led me to Lily. Together, we were ready to face whatever the future held. Embracing every moment with open hearts, the months following our engagement were a whirlwind of planning and excitement. Lily and I were deeply immersed in the details of our upcoming wedding, but amidst the joy, we never lost sight of the journey that had brought us to this point. Our relationship had been forged in the fire of past pain and current healing, making our bond even stronger. One evening, as we sat together on the porch of our new home, Lily leaned her head on my shoulder and sighed contentedly. Can you believe how far we've come? She murmured. I wrapped my arm around her, smiling. It's been quite the journey, hasn't it? But I wouldn't trade it for anything. As we watched the sunset, my mind wandered back to the events that had shaped our lives. The betrayal, the heartbreak, the moments of doubt, and the eventual healing. Each step had been necessary, leading us to the happiness we now cherish. Our wedding day was perfect. Surrounded by friends and family, we exchanged vows under a canopy of blooming flowers. Megan and Ryan stood by my side, their support unwavering. Emily was there too, offering her quiet blessing. The past no longer held its power over me. I had moved on, and so had she. 
After the ceremony as we danced to our favorite song, I whispered in Lily's ear, Thank you for believing in us. She smiled, her eyes twinkling with tears. Thank you for choosing us. The months turned into years and our life together unfolded beautifully. We face challenges as all couples do, but we face them together, always finding strength in our love. The wounds of the past had healed, leaving behind only the lessons learned and the strength gained. One day, as we sat in our living room, flipping through our wedding album, Megan and Ryan joined us. They had grown into incredible young adults, and I was immensely proud of them. We laughed at the photos, reminiscing about the day and the journey that had led us there. Dad, I'm really glad you found happiness again, Megan said, her voice filled with genuine affection. Me too, sweetheart. Me too, I replied, squeezing her hand. Ryan nodded in agreement. You taught us a lot about resilience and love, Dad. Thank you. Lily smiled, her hand resting on my knee and you both shown us what it means to support and understand each other. We're so proud of you. As the evening wore on, we shared stories and dreams, the room filled with laughter and love. It was a far cry from the uncertainty and pain of the past. We had created a new reality, one that was rich with joy and hope. Later that night, as Lily and I prepared for bed, she turned to me with a thoughtful expression. David, do you ever think about how different life might have been if things hadn't happened the way they did? I paused, considering her question. Sometimes, but not with regret. Everything we went through led us to this moment, and I wouldn't change a thing. She nodded, her eyes soft with understanding. Neither would I. Our past shaped us, but it doesn't define us. We're stronger because of it. As we lay in bed, wrapped in each other's arms, I felt an overwhelming sense of gratitude. Light had a way of throwing us curveballs, but it also had a way of leading us to where we needed to be. I had found love again, not just in Lily, but in myself and in the life we were building together. The future was a canvas, and together we were painting it with vibrant colors of hope, love, and resilience. The past had its place, but it was the present and the future that held our focus now. As I drifted off to sleep, I whispered a silent thank you to the universe for bringing Lily into my life. She had been my rock, my guide, and my greatest love. And as we moved forward, hand in hand, I knew that whatever came our way, we would face it together.